What's up guys, Sammy here, and today I'm going to be doing a PC build guide. First off though, just wanted to say a big thanks to the sponsors for this video, including Intel, who provided the i7-7820X CPU, Crucial, who provided 32GB of Ballistics Elite DDR4 RAM, Western Digital, who provided the WD Black M.2 512GB SSD, and the 6TB WD Black hard drive. Last but not certainly least, Thermal Take, who provided the Core G21 TG case, the Flowring 360mm all-in-one CPU cooler, the Tough Power DPS G RGB 750W gold power supply, and an additional ring RGB fan. You can find links with pricing and availability for all of the products used in this build guide in the video description. Without further ado, let's proceed with the build guide. For the motherboard, I went with the ASUS ROG Strix E Gaming. Let's begin with the installation of the Intel i7-7820X CPU. After lifting out the retention arms from the CPU area, lift the cover off, but don't remove the CPU cover just yet. Place the CPU noted with the triangle pointing towards the triangle on the metal cover and place it in gently. Give it a little wiggle just to make sure it's sitting in correctly. Next, place the cover down, ensuring it latches and fasten the retention arms one at a time, starting from the right to the left. You'll need to apply a bit of force here. Next up, we'll install the WD Black 512GB N.2 SSD. First, we'll remove the heatsink, and to do this, we'll need to remove the three screws on the heatsink. Next, we'll install the M.2 riser screw and then place the SSD into the M.2 slot. Finally, we'll install the screw into the M.2 riser, fastening the M.2 SSD down to the board. Next, we'll place the heatsink covering the M.2 SSD and reinstall the screws we removed. Alright, let's install the RAM. You'll need to install the RAM into the first four slots for a quad channel configuration. First, release the RAM slots, then place the RAM into the slots carefully, making sure that they fit correctly. Note the RAM's shorter side and longer side respectively to the matching slot and push down firmly until you hear a click. Let's get that Thermaltake Ring RGB fan installed and replaced from the default fan. First remove the four screws from the back of the default fan and while it's different on mine, use the screws that were provided with the fans to install the new one facing inwards so the RGB is displayable from the inside of the case and pass the cable through the top back part of the case. Next up, let's install the IO shield into the case. Placing the IO shield into the back of the case will apply medium pressure into this part and once you hear all parts click, you've successfully installed the IO shield. Let's install the motherboard. We'll place the motherboard straight in making sure it sits correctly into the IO shield. It's a good idea to make sure that the motherboard matches up with the case standoffs. Once you're confident everything looks about right, proceed to install the screws into the motherboard through the case standoffs. Ensure you do this in a cross pattern to make sure it doesn't move. We'll now get the cables ready for the Thermaltake Tough Power DPSG RGB 750W Gold Power Supply. We'll want to install only the cables we're going to use for this build. I'll first plug in the 24 pin power connector, the 8 pin CPU power connector, the 4 pin Molex connector, a SATA connector for our hard drive, and one PCIe power connector to power our GPU. Let's now place all of the cables through the case and install the power supply with the provided backplate into the case with the provided 8 screws. Make sure you do this in a cross pattern as well. On the back of the case we'll remove the hard drive plate and install the WD Black 6TB onto it with the provided 6 screws. We'll then install the hard drive with the plate back into the case. Let's now prepare the installation for the radiator into the case. First we need to install the fans with the RGB facing backwards from the radiator with the four provided screws for each fan, making sure the cables will run through towards the right of the case. Next we'll install the radiator into the front of the case. First we'll remove the front cover from the case and the dust filter. We'll then place the radiator with the fans attached into the case and align the radiator and install the 12 screws provided from the front. Make sure the cables are passed through to the side of the case as well before screwing the radiator in. Next, let's install the CPU cooler. Install the provided 2066 CPU cooler standoff screws. On the cooler itself, we will need to use the 2066 plate and this locks into the cooler. You'll need to align the CPU cooler plate so that it clicks 
together, then use this part to hold it in place and make sure that it clicks together as well. We'll then place the CPU cooler with the 2066 plate onto the standoffs and use the thumb tightening screws to install the cooler. We'll then use the screwdriver in a cross pattern to make sure the screws are firmly locked tight. Next up we'll install the cables into the motherboard and components. Pass through all of the cables as neatly as possible from the back of the case through the different pathways. We'll then install the 24 pin power connector, the 8 pin CPU power connector through the top part of the case, the front panel USB 3.0 connector, HD audio, front panel pin connectors for power, reset, front LEDs, and one slider cable which we will then plug into the WD Black 6TB hard drive along with that SATA power cable as well. At this point you can also run through the cable for the CPU cooler onto the motherboard listed as CPU underscore fan. This is important otherwise the motherboard will bring up an error at first boot. We'll also pass through the PCIe power cable as we're about to install the GPU. First, we'll need to remove the two thumb screws at the back of the case to remove this cover. Now, we'll remove the second and third PCIe slot covers. Next, we'll install the graphics card, making sure that it aligns with the slot and firmly press in till you hear a click. We'll now install the screws from the covers we just removed into the graphics card. At this time, you'll need to install the two 8-pin PCIe power connectors into the GPU. We'll now reinstall the PCIe slot cover with the two thumb screws. Last but not least, we'll get the CPU fans from the radiator and additional fan connected. Provided from Thermaltake, you'll find an RGB connector box. We'll connect the three fans from the radiator into these three ports. We'll then connect the CPU cooler, RGB block, and additional fan into these ports. Lastly, we need to connect the micro USB to USB header onto the motherboard. You'll need to connect the 4-pin power to Molex adapter which we will then plug into the Molex cable coming from the power supply. Next, we're ready to power on the PC for the first time. And if all goes well, we'll now be able to first boot into the BIOS to ensure everything is recognized. And from there, you can proceed with the installation of your desired OS. But that's going to wrap it up for this build guide video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would like to say a massive thanks again to the sponsors who helped with this build guide, including Intel, Crucial, Western Digital, and Thermaltake. Again, you can find links in the video description to all of the parts used in this build. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give the video a like and subscribe for more. A lot of effort went into this build guide. Also, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video and what else you'd like to see from the channel. But yeah, hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.